Joining us are Kim Strassel, a columnist with The Wall Street Journal, and Jose Aristamuno, a Democrat strategist. Kim, my friends on both sides of the aisle last night were in a state of shock, especially as the debate began. I was never one who believed Biden was on some type of drug, but if he picked a drug last night, he picked the wrong one. Because what I saw and heard was <laughs> like equal parts infuriating and, and sad. I mean, I, it really, my dominant thought last night was one of sadness. But what did you see? Yeah, look, I mean, we talk about past bad debate performances. When we talk about that, we're talking about somebody having a, a moment or making a gaffe that gets used in a commercial later, not being able to respond to a, to a question sufficiently. This was 90 minutes of unmitigated disaster for Joe Biden. But I, I want to make a point. Most people are focused more on the, the style question, his simple appearance and how problematic and disturbing that was. But can I also note, it was also a disaster on substance. Meaning Americans tuned into this to hear uh, not just not just to see if Joe Biden was up to the job, but to hear his answers on things. He was given multiple opportunities to hammer on Trump. He whipped all of them. He was incapable of offering a rejoinder to many of the attacks Trump made on him. So it was a failure not just of style, but of substance too, and that's what made it so devastating. Jose, to be fair, there were lucid intervals, um, but there are many Democrats who seem panicked today over Biden's performance. So is there any chance he will be replaced as the nominee? And logistically, is that even possible? Look, it's a great question, Trey, and thanks for having me on the show. Look, there's no question that that was a tough night uh, for Joe Biden. He, he didn't do well. Uh, Trump won that debate. But I think we ought to remember, number one, people are going to have a bad debate night. Barack Obama had one uh, in 2012. His first debate was horrible. Um, that's number one. And number two is, you know, the American people are not going to make a decision on a president of the United States of America on a 90-minute uh, debate setting. I don't think debates move the needle all that much. I do think um, that it didn't help Joe Biden when it, when it comes to his age and, and is he ready to be president. I, I think those 90 minutes, if you judge him just by those 90 minutes, I think it would be a problem. Uh, we saw Joe Biden this week after that debate in Raleigh, North Carolina. He was very energetic. He made it very clear he does not plan uh, to go anywhere and that he's he's up for the job. Uh, and look, that happens in life, right? You get knocked down and you get up again and you keep going. So I think we'll have Joe Biden come for the convention and come November. Kim, you mentioned content, agenda. I actually was, I guess I'm such a nerd, I was actually listening for content last night, and there was a little bit, so let's <laughs> listen together and I'll ask you about it on the other side. He caused the inflation, and it's killing black families and Hispanic families and just about everybody. It's killing people. They can't buy groceries anymore. I gave him a country with no, essentially no inflation. It was perfect, it was so good. There was no inflation when I became president. You know why? The economy was flat on its back. 15% unemployment. He decimated the economy. Kim, policy is actually important for that office. I mean, I hate to sound naive, but it is. Immigration, the economy, debt. But they all seem to be subordinate last night to fitness for office. So is there any way, to Jose's point, that Joe Biden can recover from this performance? Because... Look, I, Barack Obama may not have had a great debate performance. It was nothing like what I saw last night. No, there's no comparison. And look, the White House is now going to try to tough this out. They're already saying he's not going to quit. He'll, he's going to stay the stay the course. But here's the thing to watch in my mind going forward. Democrats have had these panics briefly in the past, never anything quite as large as this. Um, and then they just kind of settled back into the paradigm. And the reason they did so is because they looked at the polls and, and as Jose said, didn't move the needle much. And he wasn't dragging down the down ticket ballot. But you watch those polls now. If you begin to see Donald Trump widening his national lead or in those key battleground states, and just as importantly, if you see Senate candidates and Democratic candidates beginning to get drowned in the tide of, of problems for Biden, then that'll be the moment whether Democrats decide if they're going to make this guy go. But the problem is, is they are running out of time logistically uh, to make that decision. Jose, I realize there are Democrats who seem to genuinely like President Biden, but it also appears there are a lot of Democrats who just do not want Donald Trump to win. 
So if the polling begins to separate and this deb de debate performance remains being a topic of conversation, what happens then? Yeah, look, it, it's a great question. I think if we got to a point that we saw, you know, the president maybe his ability to deliver and communicate got worse from here to maybe the convention. I think, you know, the, the, the plan, which I do not think that's going to happen, by the way, it's, it's having have an open convention. I don't think there's any other way to, to go about it. Um, I, I think it's too early to talk about it, and I, and I just don't think it's realistic. I, I, I saw Joe Biden after the debate in some of the rallies that, that he was at, and I saw him ener energetic. I think he had a bad night. I'm not justifying that he had a cold. I think you said at the beginning of the program, you know, we all have had colds and maybe we are a little bit more on the ball. But let me just say this. We don't travel, you know, to three countries in two days. We're not president of the United States. So I think the toll that it takes having a cold for a president is a little bit different of a standard than maybe us here on, on this show tonight. Um, and, and, and the last thing I'll say is policy and the record, right? I think the American people are going to look at Biden. Age will be an issue, but they're going to look at inflation being at 9% now, being at 3. 15 million jobs created. This is a, a president that actually likes immigrants. He wants legal immigrants to come. He just He's, he's helping 500,000 undocumented immigrants that are married to American citizens, right? And, and we have another person who's a criminal in, 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 and is a reality and wants to deport Latinos. If you're a Latino watching this show tonight, he wants to deport you. So which one do you want? Which choice? Do you want the criminal that maybe can deliver a debate or do you want the older guy that actually has a record that's going to help you move forth? That's the big question. I actually did not hear President Trump, former President Trump, say he wanted to deport all Latinos, but I will let people judge it. They can watch it and listen to it for themselves. What's the, re what's Kim the, no, 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 what's the record? Kim Strasso, Jose Aristamuno, thank you for joining us on a Sunday night. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.